ons gaan niet zo so vinnig en leidend gesels met ons volgende gast, Melanie Wright, en ons gesels um, oor haar leven, en um, sy is ook, nou moet ek sê, mevrouw heel al, 2018, is dat de right, yeah, Mrs. Mrs. Universe. Universe, South Africa, yes. Yeah. Congratulations. Welcome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Just give us a, a, a quick background. Um, there's been hardship in your life and uh, you're busy with the book, but just a little bit of background where you grew up. What's your story? Yes, I um, was born in Port Elizabeth and I started schooling there and then we moved to East London and spent most of my life there. But in between that, it's been here and there and everywhere. So, um, yes, and in... 2009, I moved up here to to Pretoria. I've been here, done a total kind of career change now from from finance into where I am now. Mm. So it's been so exciting. I'm I'm remarried again and have four children. Sure. So yeah, life's been busy. It's been great. Though. And uh, I don't want to call it a beauty pageant because it's yes. more than that. It's a, it's a, it's not a typical thing, but it's still yes. beauty involved. But yes. were you ever into competitions um, early in your life or not? No. Nothing. So, no. But how did this, this was, happen then? Um, you know, I, I saw the pageant advertised, and it was so in line with with what I believed in and empowering women and. You know the challenges that would come with it, so I thought, okay, this is up for a challenge as well. Let me see, and it it would give me a, a broader um, spectrum of with my book yeah. and the motivational speaking, and it just everything just fit in line. And then I was blessed enough to to walk away with the crown and the title. So. Yeah, <laughs> but as for the motivational part um, to your story and and to you sharing with people, was that always part of your life? Have you always been that person who wanted to motivate and inspire? I have always wanted to, Is but it? for many, many years, I never came out with a story. I was mm. always worried on what do people think and, you know, people are quick to judge. And we, we don't realize, look, it doesn't matter where you come from. For, for us, it's from where you're going. Mm. And one day I thought, you know what, I just can't keep hiding behind my story. I'm just going to let it out, let it go. And you can't believe how accepting people actually are to think, you know what, I thought that I had it bad, but you have just motivated me. And that actually keeps me keeps me going when I see how inspired um, people are. I've mm. left people and mm. it just makes me want to do more and more. So that's Amazing. been great. We are going to talk about the book and also we know what you have lived in your life. And I think it's all clear that you can come to this point. We are going to talk about the book. Ons uh, gast is in die atleer waarom ons gesels, Melanie Wright, as jy die eerste deel gemis het, dit sal op YouTube ook wees, um, en uh, sy is ook, ek sê het altyd, Mrs. Universe, um, en vir 2018 geweest, maar sy is bezig met die boek, so let's talk about your, your book, because it's, uh, I just got it last night, so I just paged it, not physically paged it, yes, yes, I got the PDF, yes. um, and it's like, uh, there is some shocking stuff in your childhood, living on the streets at five, children's home, dropping mm. out of school, falling pregnant at 16, um, lost uh, twins. Uh, it's just like, it feels, when, when I just, uh, the summary, I feel like, dude, don't complain. Um, yes. You know, how did you get through it and some of the stuff? How did it happen to end up on the street at five? Um, well, I think because, you know, sometimes my, my mom had met someone, but he was what we would call a rough diamond. And mm. um, he was really... I think what society would look down upon, I think he would do to support his family, you know. So, um, and it just happened that he was more of a, of a drifter and my mom would follow because she would think, okay, we're going to try a better life, we're going to go there and we're going to... Mm. But it would never work out that way. Mm. So without, with being in severe poverty, we, I mean, we didn't have a vehicle or whatever, so we would have to hike from this place to that place or stay in train stations or things like that, you know. But mm. for me, it never affected me at such a young age because I think as a child, we are so loyal to to our family that it, it didn't matter to me because I had my mom and my stepdad, which... Oh, you weren't like on your fo- own on the street. That's why I was no, 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 like no, five I was years old. My living. Mom. Oh, no. It's like the family, yeah. yeah, yeah it was still, the it's family. It's still bad. I mean, I don't think it makes yeah. it necessarily better. Yes. You know, sure. sometimes people would take us in for the night and I would always lay in the bed thinking, you know, I wish this could be my house and the, it's, you know, a warm bed and the house smells like food and whatever, but then you never get used to it. You just keep going again. Mm. And, 
But so long as I think I had my mom and my sister with me and, and my stepdad, it, for me, that mattered at that time. You know, mm. he's having them with that was your my comfort zone. Mm. As a young so, as, as a young girl, did you have did you have some questions as to why you were in a situation such as that? When I got older, I did. When I when I got older and started realizing, okay, look, that wasn't the norm. That is not normal. You know, and I I always had this resentment, I would say, and this hurt. And why did I get this life? Why did why am I the the lucky one that can never, you know, have stability like everybody else, or the mm. nice toys, or the, um, yeah. So it did, it did. I did have a lot of hurt and anger that came with it. Mm. That why couldn't I be one of those lucky kids that had everything? Um, sure. But but that perception changed many many years later. That changed mm. for me. Wow. And you've that. got an amazing family, beautiful family. Um, and daughters, and uh, with the book, was there still some healing taking place, or uh, you know, it's just um, sharing your story, or while you were writing the book, and it was, I think, Harry helped you. Who's yes, 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 Jerry, Pelser Jerry, not Harry, me. Jerry. Um, yeah, he helped me. It, mm. it was a bit of a a raw experience mm. um, writing it because as I wrote, I could see it mm. because I still remember the the bed like in the children's home and what they were doing in there. So I could remember, I could smell certain smells and it, sure. you know, so, um, but it did help to, mm. to put things back into perspective and mm. for me and, mm. and I think accept it, mm. you yeah. know, and make a positive thing now from that mm. and not just feel sorry for myself and go, oh, mm. I had it bad. Cause Millions of people are having it bad. I'm not the only one that had it bad. So, yeah. but still, I mean, you've been one of those who had it bad. So you can you can relate to people that are going through a process such as this. Yes. Um, but what would your your specific message be to someone who's maybe tuned in now or who's heard about your story that really doesn't know which way to go? How how would you inspire and motivate them? I think a lot of people in those situations are not. They're not speaking out. Mm. They're not telling people what they're going through. Um, people want to keep it a secret because of they, they're scared of being judged, of being classed in a certain way. And, you know, so people need to speak out. They need to ask for help and not be scared to ask for help. I mean, I kept my, my story a secret for like 40 years mm. because I didn't want people, because I've already had rejection and, mm. you know, you get. Oh, you didn't need more. Yeah, you didn't want more and think, okay, I'm not going to be now telling you my story because then it's even going to be worse. But sure. you, you can't believe that when you actually come out and you tell people your story, how accepting they are and how you have helped them to realize and think, you know what, I had it bad and I know I'm not alone. And then there's other people that are also having it just as bad. So I think it's important they need to ask for help and speak to people and, you know, people that they can, can trust and mm. confide in and... Mm. You know? the, the book is called uh, Mal Against the Universe. Uh, is it going to be published is it, or is it already? Yes. Or is, um, are you in the process? We, we're doing the final manuscript now and okay. then we will be launching the book um, hopefully by the end of July, the latest. We will be publishing that book. So <laughs> that has been a dream for many, many years. So I'm, I'm so excited. To oh, fantastic. Yes. And also, the people who are looking for the Melanie Will book as a motivation speaker, and we're going to talk to you later, we're going to then we'll bring you in contact. Melanie, thank you so much. Yeah. I'm looking forward uh, to reading the rest. I, I, won't, I won't forward it to someone else. I'll wait okay. for the hard copy, but yes. I'm going to read my And there my might e-copy. be a few changes. I mean, the, that's not the yeah, final one yet, so you never know. I was, I was yeah. gripped. I was from the beginning of the story. It's like a good story. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Great. Thank you for the time. Oh, thanks for having me. It's Great. a pleasure. Welkom by die groot ontbijt sy YouTube kanaal. As jy dit nog nie gedoen het nie, maak seker, jy teken aan dier op die rooi subscribe knopie te druk. En as jy gehuid van wat jy nou net gesien het, en jy soek meer sulke type videos, wel gaan klik net op die playlist knopie. Maar maak seker, jy besoek die kanaal op die dagelikse basis, want ons hou jy op hoogte van sake, al kon jy dit ook nie noodwendig rechtstreeks gekyk het nie. So, daar het jy dit, heel eenvoudig.